Hi, everybody. Um, we're in a really interesting place uh, regarding education right now. Especially, it's fantastic. It's phenomenal to be able to work with education in Finland. Finland is an educational superpower. We score high, not just on the, on the PISA test, but on about 12 different rankings about education. So it's pretty great to work with reforming education, trying to figure out how we learn, and so forth. But we do have a problem, though, because education is broken. And even here in Finland, where things are so much better than many other places, education is broken. Recent research, published two months ago, points out that a whopping 25% of all Finnish school children are bored to death in schools. They suffer from a syndrome known as a bore out, which is the opposition, opposite of burnout. Even more recent research, published just a few days ago, points out that 20%, more than 20% of Finnish school children are completely disconnected from why they need to learn the things they learn. They see no point in going to school. And these are, mind you, massive numbers. So education is broken, and we need to do something about it. Now, the reason to these numbers, I believe, is crystal clear. And it's because we have learned to make life more and more interesting in the recent years. And there is a growing gap, an attention gap, between what goes on in the classroom and what goes on after the classroom and between classes in the recess. When the kids come out and they play a game or they chat to their friends, they meet their buddies, and they have fun. And then they come back to the classroom, and even with all these ma magnificent advances in learning, education, still, if you go to a randomly picked classroom in a Finnish school, what you see there is basically a teacher standing in front of the class and going, blah, 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 blah. Sorry about that. But that's actually like, even with this, uh, let me emphasize that there are some fantastic, some absolutely mind-blowing schools here in Finland. But if you randomly pick one, this is what you'll probably see. So we need to do something about this. Uh, we started Lightyear, a learning game studio, because we believe that games may actually be one of the biggest solutions to resolving this conundrum. Now, that being said, before I tell you a bit, bit more about this, I don't, I don't want to give you the impression that learning games will be the be-all, end-all of learning. That would be silly. In fact, there's a huge offering of fantastic new next-generation learning tools out there. And in doing these education reforms, we should not just Pick one, like the flipped classroom, or e-learning, or project-based learning, or whatever. We should actually pick all of them. We should take the whole variety of these new kinds of tools for learning that we have at our disposal, and then pick the ones that work best in whatever circumstances we learn. But that being said, games do offer a fantastic possibility to facilitate learning because games are actually, in and of themselves, learning experiences. If you think about something, some game like Angry Birds, I mean, you know, people tend to think of it's like, you know, kind of mindless waste of time. But now if you play Angry Birds 2 at level 100, you'll need to have learned a massive amount of things about how the birds behave, what special abilities they have, how the different pigs behave, how the different structures behave. And if you were to do a spreadsheet of all those parameters that go into just you know, solving an Angry Birds to level 100, you'd have pages of parameters you need to have figured out before you're able to do that. None of us can, do, can solve an Angry Birds level 100 straight out of the box. So games are learning. But there's another thing also and it's that we actually, even though education is broken, learning is not. Learning is, in fact, when it happens, when we get these aha moments, when, we, you know, when our curiosity is raised. Learning is the, one of the most fantastic human experiences we can have. 
this kind of, like, you know, really when you figure things out. That's what we need to be able to provide to people in our educational uh, contexts. And games, as I said, are a great conduit for this. With Linear, we realized pretty quickly when we started thinking about how to build learning games, we realized that you can't just take a school book and gamify it. In fact, this whole buzz about gamification and you know, funnifying learning is backwards because you don't need to do anything about learning. You just need to make learning happen. So instead of gamifying, instead of funnifying learning, what we need to do is we need to take substance like physics or history or mathematics and build the game out of that substance itself. So in other words, if you think that physics is boring, don't make a physics game. You'll not succeed. You need to be madly in love with the stuff that you're trying to put into the game, as any great game designer knows. We identified four design principles, stealth learning, casual learning, progressive learning, and individual learning, that we need to stick to if we want to create amazing learning games. Stealth learning means that instead of coming to the game and, hey, I want to learn English, you in fact come to the game because you're having fun, because the game is, it actually engages you. It's a great game. And then when you play, you realize all of a sudden I learned something. A great example of stealth learning is this TV show that I'm sure that every Finnish person knows, made in the 80s in France, called Once Upon a Time Live, uh, Olipa Kerran Elama. Uh, just raise your hand if you know this show. And this is a show about the human body, about biology. But instead of, you know, a teacher coming to the screen and telling, your human body has a heart that pumps, uh, pumps, what is this stuff in our veins? Blood, sorry. And so on and so forth. You actually have these, you know, funny characters that are the red cells and the white cells, and they, you know, they have these crises when bacteria invade the body and they have to fight them back. And it's really, it's a, it's a fantastic TV show. So my daughter, when she was four, she watched this TV show. It's five DVDs. It's like 60 episodes. She watched this five times in a row. So it's like 300 hours of TV. And you know, for the dad, it was almost like a bit too much, to be quite honest. But my daughter loved this. And when she was four, I asked her, Celia, what are lymphocytes and macrophages? You know, how many of you guys know what are lymphocytes and macrophages? Raise your hand. There. So my four-year-old daughter, who no one had ever taught a thing about biology, she goes, well, lymphocytes are, anti uh, are, are these white cells that uh, deplete antibodies, and macrophages, they eat dead bacteria. From a four-year-old girl. So this, uh, this was in 2010. Later, when I started researching game learning, I realized that this is not an isolated uh, event. In fact, there's a game called Dragon Box that enables you to learn algebra. And Dragon Box was tested on 40,000 ki ch children. And these 40,000 children, 93% of them learned basic algebra in just 1.5 hours. So what we can achieve with stealth learning, with casual learning, with this kind of like making learning not into this huge big thing you need to chew at once, but these small instruments, making learning as fun as playing a game. It's not just that we generate more learning in school context, it's that we are going to see feats of learning unlike we've ever been able to dream before. And this is the future of learning that we're envisioning here. It's a future of, a future of learning where learning is not something that people think about as tedious, something that people think about as chore, but something that people em embrace. Some, you know, I'm, I'm, my background is in academia, and I love to read thick books. And I'm pretty sure that this is the kind of future that we're able to generate once we start really lighting up that fire in people's eyes. Once we start really sort of, you know, finding that way to pique that interest, finding that way to to show people that you know, physics is amazing, history is amazing, learning a new language is phenomenal. And one of the best ways to do that is to create great, uh, great learning games that work out of the box as games, that instead of the, those kids playing games like uh, casual hit games in the recess, they'll start playing games where all of a sudden they know the periodic table, they know historical characters, all of a sudden they understand a new language. 
And this is what games already do. In Finland, boys generally speak better English than girls. And the reason is not that the boys are paying more attention in the English class, but the reason is that they play games. And the games, fortunately, are typically in English. And this is the kind of phenomenon that we're going to see blasting through the world. We're going to see, in the next five years, a massive change in the way we learn. And that change is not going to happen top-down uh, from the institutions. It's going to happen in the recess. It's going to happen in the afternoon. It's going to happen in the confines of our pocket when we have a mobile device that helps us tap into whatever we want to learn, find these new kinds of avenues of inquiry, finding a way to arouse curiosity by these games. A world where everybody can learn pretty much anything instantly by playing a game, by having fun. The future of learning is future where, the lear uh, where learning is one of the most amazing things that we can do. Future of learning is where learning is fun. Thank you very much.